Perfect. I appreciate it. We're taking kind of like a little breather. I know. Listen, guys. I know. I know I talk a lot. Uh, one movie that I really do like, and this is uh, associating like cross-referencing or saying I like this movie. I've got a movie called The Projectionist written by Cole Spivey and Daniel Lunt. He helped with it. I want you to see Nightcrawler with Jake Lindenhall. Watch it immediately. Okay? And grow as a storyteller. Anyone on this planet that doesn't respect Jake Lindenhall as an artist, as a film artist, and I always just say grow up, not weed. If anyone doesn't respect him, I'm gonna be like, you're crazy, the guy's parents were filmmakers, you know? But regardless, you gotta see Nightcrawler. There's an energy there that's gonna be like a Dare Martin. It's gonna be very similar. Because you have to cross-reference energy. I was always told as a writer, don't worry about, or as a director, as a director, don't worry about saying, I think you should play it like Gary Oldman right here. Because yeah, it's kind of cheating in a way, but it gets the actor to stretch. They all do it. Especially Quentin Tarantino, he'll say, okay, this is very much black exploitation film about blah, blah, blah. You know, he's all specific. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? David Lynch is like bubblegum cigarettes. You're like, I get it. I get it. Bubble gum and cigarettes. I get it. I, I completely get it. You see the difference? That's because he learned to be that way. This is really cool. Look at all zigzagging. There's like a ball here. He learned to be that way because he painted. He was a painter. Probably a 10 part show. He was a, a, a painter. So he learned to use words like bubble gum and cigarettes because it's imagery. If he was talking to you about a painting, he would use, like I would talk to him, I'd say, hey, David Lynch, grow up, not weed, you know? And he would go, what's not weed? And I'd say it's spelled K-N-A-U-T. And then I'd go like this. And he'd be like, okay, I see. I'm gonna get his art after he passes away. I'm gonna get his art and go to the modern in Fort Worth. We're gonna get a whole collection of David Lynch's art and bring it in through Fort Worth to educate people about Lynchian art and what art is about and kind of like what a painter can do with moving paintings. I call that the Death Star. I'm very, very proud to be a father of three children. And soon to be four. This is an art piece here in Fort Worth at night. They're so proud of it that they have lights on it. I call it the Death Star. And we'll have to head back pretty soon to pick up the pizza. It takes a good thief to be a great artist. You have to be a good thief. Not a bad one, but a good one. All right, looking good, looking good. We're gonna head back, get your pizza. We gotta conserve.
cop knocked on my door in the middle of the night last night. I don't want him fired. I want him arrested now. That's attempted murder. And his brothers have already arrested him. He turned in his badge and his sidearm. Now, he starts a new career with the new Liberty Party. I now will arm that fallen police officer, who's now a citizen completely, with an HKMP7 with a silencer. Male or female, I don't care. She, she or he, he or she will keep it close to the body. And they are my first soldier. Because whoever knocked on my door, it was a polite light knock. That is how you kill. You do it with kindness in your heart. You kill with politeness, not with anger. And he knocked on the door very, very kindly. And I respect that. They did fire him. But regardless, he uh, is going to be one of my soldiers. And we need, him, we need him to have overwatch immediately. Immediately. MK-13 Mod 5. Somewhere around here. All right, so we know about the projectionist. We're going to do the whole entire vlog, as in video log, of the projectionist. We're going to understand Adair Martin. We're going to understand Aiden Harris. We're going to understand Allie Starlings. And we're certainly going to understand uh, Harrison Staples, who is mute and beautiful Asian woman that marries Adair Martin. We're going to understand the death of Adair Martin. We're going to understand all of that. And we're going to vlog it quietly uh, probably this summer. We are going to touch up and polish Grace, the werewolf movie. We're going to print it out. I might even just use a Kinko's just to save on, on printer cartridge. I like the idea of printing it with my own printer, but we're going to print it this summer. Or no, I'm sorry, the end of summer. Probably August. And we're going to mail it to Grim Life Collective. They have a P.O. box. We're going to mail it to them as a gift. Just as a gift, so it's out there. That's going to be Grace, the werewolf uh, movie. It's a horror film. Then we're going to polish up the pilot of Escape from Maine. It's going to polish it up, and we're going to do a reading of Escape from Maine. I, get, I was given this idea by a guy named um, Eric Soderberg. He's an actor out in Los Angeles. He's done Century 21 commercials. He's done uh, Nickelodeon. It's that type of actor. But he gave me the idea a long time ago. So we're going to do a reading of, of a few screenplays of original work that I wrote. It's all original work. Uh, probably at least three screenplays, readings coming up. We are going to work on Skinny Pete tonight. And if I'm quick enough, we're just going to add a touch to Chin, which is the novel, Chin Part 2. So we're going to have a big night tonight. i got to put... Uh, that was Victoria's uh, restaurant. She used to take silverware for, from them all the time. Beautiful redhead lady that I dated when we were, I was about maybe 25. We met on stage in The Marriage of Bet and Boo. She was uh, Bet's sister that was in a mental institution and I played uh, Boo in The Marriage of Bet and Boo. It's a Christopher Durang play. And we did that in a Catholic uh, nun nunnery. What in the world? These are up there right here. Someone just, that's just the weirdest thing. I hate that. I used to pick those up in New York and smoke them. I'll, I'll never do that again. Victoria is an actress that knows so much about comedy. She did comedy sports in Philadelphia. That was Bradley Cooper's hometown. She is gifted beyond repair. Gifted beyond repair. 
She's an amazing, amazing actress. Uh, energy level way up there. Perfect for Christopher Durang. The best thing I've ever worked with when it comes to Christopher Durang was uh, Victoria. She, oh, almost broke my ankle. Chris, uh, Christopher Durang is perfect for her. She's very, very funny. Ball of energy. Uh, probably one of the best comic actresses I've ever worked with in my life. We dated a little bit. She had a son. Her son's name was uh, Zeke. He, he, she wanted him to be a rock star. I don't know what he is now. He's, who knows? Probably an engineer or something. Great, great lady. Uh, she went to Maine with me to visit my folks a long time ago. She's in Dallas. Pray for her because she needs the energy. It's good, good to pray. It's probably, so it's, it's good to pray at all times. There's a church over that way. And this church over here is beautiful. I've been there before. It's Presbyterian. Wonderful church. It's First Presbyterian. Wonderful lady. Probably one of the most beautiful ladies I've ever met in Fort Worth. Her name is Elizabeth Barnes. Or that's, that was one of her names. But she goes there gorgeous. She looks like the love interest of Rocky. Sylvester Stallone. That chick. She was also in The Godfather. Looks a lot like her young, younger, younger, younger. Like sister, grand sister, whatever. Like she even has her voice. Just She was very funny. She has a wave thing with her, her daughter. She's from Puerto Rico. This wave thing where she waved at her daughter looked just like Adrian from Rocky. Have you ever seen Rocky Balboa? You know, Adrian? She looks similar to her. She's also, in the, I think, the same actress as in The Godfather. Anyway, we're going to pick up the pizza and drop it off at your doorstep. All right, there's the pizza hut. We're going 2.2 miles, about, I don't know, about six minutes. We'll be there at 1040 in the PM, as in the post meridium. This is called coasting. Tree life. That's the Alice Starling's house. I'm scouting for the projectionist.
Thank you. Yo, what's up? All right, later. Anyway, I think that'd be great. do have enemies in the New Liberty Party. They'll all fall in one night. In one night. It's called Dog Night Out. lot about the new liberty party and the men to movement i kind of throw things thing in passing so i'll throw things around in passing so here is some thought on the new liberty party there will be a night of restructuring the country it'll happen at night it'll be a restructuring of the entire country all 50 states it'll be called dog night out certain people and you'll know you'll know in your heart certain people will be removed from their positioning People will be ripped out of their cars. And all the new Liberty Party for defense. And there will be... The, there will be defense and there will be aggression because you can't just operate in defense only. In war, you have to also have some, some type of aggressor. But we will be the art of silence. The art of silence. So if you have your, your, your HK MP7 or something similar, if it, you can't get a hold of one because they sell out, and they will sell out, then get a hold of something similar that makes sure it's silence so they don't know the direction. A silencer goes like this. It's about that loud. It's about that loud. If you're using the SR25, silence it. That's all I have to say. Make sure it's silent. Now, if you're going to do Overwatch with the MK13-5, Get a distance, get distance, because they can't follow the distance. None of them will speed. Even if every officer is removed from, from their force, no one will go over the speed limit. You will know the art of silence. There is an art in silence. It was as if you were never there. <laughs> the dogs will only be on the corner of the streets. They will not be in the vehicles. They will be out outside on the corners. They will not be in your vehicles. If you're able to train the cats to smell they'll be able to smell probably a hundred times better than a dog there is a Russian animal trainer that knows how to train cats better than dogs they use a clicker they use sound the cats can do many things 
They can smell gunpowder. They can smell gunpowder. They can smell gunpowder very well. And you can train them with a clicker. Cats can. They can smell gunpowder up to probably a half a mile. They will be in the vehicles. The dogs will be on the corner right around here. It's a little maddening, I know, but the dogs will be out on the corner. They will not be in the vehicles. They're too noisy. The cats will be, be put into a container. It's called a, a cat box container or a uh, cat carrier uh, where they'll be able to smell and give the clue. And I know it's funny, but the cats can be trained to do certain things to give off the signal of the gunpowder, right? And they're going to distinguish your gunpowder from the enemy's gunpowder. A cat can do that. It can tell the difference between the gunpowders. So it can smell the difference between a 22 bullet gunpowder and a 45 caliber gunpowder. It can tell the difference between the smell of a Smith and Weston gunpowder and another type of gunpowder. A cat can do that. They're that exact with smell. They'll be used only for smell and they'll be trained to be very quiet. You can train your cat to attack from the vehicle. It can be done. Read the story Silver Alert Kitty. I wrote it for Fiction Press, but it did not air on Fiction Press, okay? It has not aired on Fiction Press. It's only aired on Facebook. but I might air it on, on Fiction Press tonight. That may be the first project we do. We may do an airing of Silver Alert Kitty on uh, fictionpress.com first. We'll air it. I want y'all to read Silver Alert Kitty if you're part of the New Liberty Party. Also, I am going to work a little bit on Skinny Pete and Friends. I've already posted it on Facebook. And I'm going to do like a few lines of Chin and Chin Part 2, right? And we're about to head back and see Kitty. His name is Edmund Tuxedo Cassavetes. He's a cat and he's trained. He's a very well-trained cat. It's a very good cat. He even has some aqua training. Let's see if it flashes. There's the flash. Your cat can be your friend in the cat container. You can even uh, ride with the cat as long as it's in a container or in what's known as uh, a cat carrier. They have different types. Right. You can even tie a camera around a cat's neck. Now, the hardest part about Dog Night Out and the New Liberty Party is going to be soberness. If I find out that you were not sober during Dog Night Out, you'll be removed from the New Liberty Party. Okay? You'll be removed. You must do everything with kindness, and you must do everything sober. So that God witnesses you and works in your life as you restructure the government. We cannot do it if we don't do it the right way. We have to do it with love in our hearts because we care about your family. I care about your mom and I care about your dad. I care about your cousins. 
I care about everybody that you know. I care about your friends. I care about your family. And I know that you've had a hard life. And I know you want to restructure the government, but you cannot do it like a hooligan. If we cannot have organization, then we'll fall. United we stand with the New Liberty Party. Divided will always fall. We can have communication. It doesn't have to be encrypted. You can speak normal about what you're doing to everyone else that you do it on the night of Dog Night Out. But do not live stream anything. God does not want that. There will be a certain people that will be assigned to video so that we have proof of Dog Night Out. And those people will, will know who they are and they'll just know. But you do not have to live stream anything. For one thing, it would be dangerous for you to live stream anything. What you want to do is just focus on your task at hand. And everybody will know Dog Night Out. Just like everybody knew when the World of, War, uh, World of Wars happened with, George, uh, what was his name? Or Orson Welles, right? Orson Welles, uh, he did a broadcast called The War of the Worlds. Yeah, world, was it war? Yeah, it was War of the, of the Worlds. It was about the Martians attack and everyone thought it was real, you know? And people jumped out of buildings and stuff in New York City because they thought the world was being taken over by Martians and all this kind of stuff. But that was aired on, the, on one radio station. It was supposed to be a symphony. It was supposed to be kind of like um, music was playing. And they were, uh, you know, uh, enjoying a symphony. And, and all of a sudden the newscast breaks in and it says, listen, we're at... Uh, a war with these aliens that have landed and all this stuff and people got shotguns and armed themselves all over the country it was wild chaos and no one knew that it was actually just a stage play it was a radio play the cop that approached me at that waffle house there's a starbucks right there was a real police officer he was a real police officer he no longer works for the force he was fired i got the message the other day he no longer is a police officer he, his badge and his sidearm was removed and he's being investigated for sex trafficking. And there's a reason for that. Listen, everything happens for a reason. We're all here on the same side. Okay? But there's too much. There's so many cameras and there's so many ways of recording, let's say like microphones and all these things all over the world, especially cameras, that people don't even know that they're under investigation, especially police officers. They will be taken off the street and removed from their positions, but not in Dog Night Out. Dog Night Out is not a time for that. It's not a time for paperwork. Dog Night Out is, is a time for love. It's a time to be kind and to silence them using your silencer because you want to be quiet. It's, you're not killing with hatred. Don't ever have any hatred in your heart. You will kill with kindness always with kindness. You kill them with kindness. But make sure you have the silencer on the HK. MP7. It's a submachine gun. Make sure you have the silencer there. But do it with kindness. Smile. You can say, w would you mind? Because they'll be dying for the one and only Messiah. They will go to heaven. Know that in your heart. They will go to heaven. They have to. It'll be a night of crucifixion. Because crucifixion has to happen. It has to happen. And these people would die for you. So let them. They want to die for you. They put their life on the line every day. And they need to for their families. So that they will be honored. We will make... Um, now, if they fight back, they won't be. But if, if they go like lambs, which they will. Their hands will be in the air. We'll put their photographs in a big museum when we take over D.C., and we'll honor each one that died for Dog Night Out and the New Liberty Party. So the babies can live. We want to save the unborn babies. So the babies can live. The babies can live. The babies can live. The babies can live. The, the babies can live. The babies can live. The babies can live. The babies can live. Men to movement. The babies can live. 
That's what you want to tell them. If you have to tell them, try not to say anything to them, but say, we want the babies to live. That's all you need to say because you care about the babies. I'm a father of three. You want to do it for the babies. So your babies can live. My babies are fine. Remember, this is Harmon Dobson. That's his wife, looks like Barbara Bush. He, all he wanted in life was a hamburger that would fit in both your hands. And that's him. He died in a plane crash, personal plane crash. It went up about a hundred feet and whoosh, right down the ground. Him and his uh, business partner died together. Look how the tie goes in front of the lettering. Gotta die for something. Okay, now some lesbians can participate in Dog Night Out, but they have to be able to get through the training. So there'll be boot camp for Dog Night Out. And some lesbians will have to be trained to do it. So 2.9 miles, we have the water burger. it's safe. Uh, the lesbian lady gave it to me, she was really nice, she had tattoos, she'd probably make a good soldier. Be there in seven minutes, it'll be 11.23 p.m. So the New Liberty Party does support feminism. I know it's crazy, you know, it, I know it's crazy, but we also are pro-life, okay? But we support feminism. We, for, we support the woman working, we support the woman as soldier, okay? especially the lesbian. So we're, we're also, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say anything about Antifa, things like that. I'm not gonna say anything about uh, right, alt-right or anything like that, but we do support people of different nations that represent different nations. Let's just put it that way. Because I know Antifa highly supports, uh, uh, what's it called, transgender and all that stuff. But we support, uh, we support different nations. We call it different nations. So if you have a belief about anything like that. We're not gonna say, oh, it's wholly unjust. We're not gonna say it's biblically correct because we know people stumble. But we are gonna say we support it, especially if you're a soldier, if you wanna be a soldier. We're not gonna exclude you and say, okay, well, you're, you know, you, you have a girlfriend and you're a girl, you know, or you're a lady that has a lady friend. We're not gonna exclude you from being a soldier but we have to retrain you to make sure we're, we're going to have to train you to make sure that you're on the same board as the men too movement. Remember we're, we're, we're men too. We're the leaders of the movement because we're men. Okay. So we're men too. We, we see ourselves as leaders, but we'll work right alongside of you as long as you respect the fact that we're men. And then we respect the fact that you're a, you know, a woman because we know that you can be kind of, you know, like a bull dyke or something like that. And that's okay. You can be a, uh, a big time feminist, you know, uh, a woman that's very masculine and we're okay with that. We're okay. If you got your liquor license, that's fine. We're okay with it. That can help us as long as you support the fact that we are men and we, and we, and we stand up for men. Okay. The men to movement. Let's do it again right here. Men. Here we go. Like this. Men. Two. Men, two. Got it?
bicycles. Bicycles are our friend. We want to use bicycles. They're our friend. There he is. Smelly kitty, oh smelly kitty. What are they feeding you? Smelly kitty, oh smelly kitty. What are they feeding you? Look at that whale kitty. And his whale shark tunnel. Oh, you had air conditioning all day. Turn that off right here. Smelly kitty, oh smell. We got a lot of work to do. I got a lot of writing to do tonight. I'm doing three different projects. The first thing is I'm uploading Silver Alert Kitty onto my fictionpress.com. Nobody knocks on my door tonight because I'm going to be typing the whole time. We, believe it or not, got the skinny Pete scene done. So we have an advancement on skinny Pete and friends. Get in a moment, Kitty. Please, Bill Gates, work with me. Yeah, it looks like Bill Gates is gonna work with me. I don't know, I'll have to find out. Look at this, is Kitty gonna work with me? Oh, he is, hang on. Maybe not, I can't tell. I can't tell, Bill. yes, Bill Gates is gonna work with me, okay. Bill Gates is a genius. Give me a second. Yes, Bill Gates is working with me. This thing was purchased uh, 2017. Six years old. Anyway, look at this kitty. We'll give him some wet. We'll turn into a cat commercial. Smelly kitty, smelly kitty. What are you feeding me? Kitty's not feeding you anything. Nope, because I don't deserve to eat. Not right now. God bless it. It's all the apostles, and I may watch it again tonight if I can. I gotta get the vlog up. We're having, well for Kitty, Fancy Feast Delights with Cheddar. And this is gonna be grilled. Now we're gonna look at this right here. It's tuna and cheddar, cheese, feast and gravy. Amen. For Kitty. I, I believe in praying with your, kid, your cats. I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy. But I do believe in prayer for all types of healing, as long as it's unto Jesus Christ, our Lord Messiah, also known as Yeshua. The Lord bless him. I know I don't seem very holy. Oh, it's all wet right here. It's because the enemy has his tricks up his sleeve. The enemy does. He has tricks up his sleeve. And it needed a good wash down. This one, we're gonna see if Kitty likes it. We get the light, the light is on. I don't know how that happened, Kitty. But somehow, I guess before I, let me see if he has, okay, he does. Here's a hit of backup. We'll go ahead and let him polish it off. I shouldn't do this for you, Kitty, because you're a fat whale. But I'm going to, because I care for you. And I believe in the Lord. As in, I'm, I trust in the Lord Almighty, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass among us. Uh, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I got a text, so hang on. Come on, kid. Or deliver us from the evil one. There we go, kitty. Very good. You love it. So the first thing we have to find, actually what we have to do is we're going to have to go to Facebook and retrieve Silver Alert Kitty and probably copy and paste it into notes, which is right here. See notes? It's right in the center. So first, we're gonna to have to access it and capture it. It's only on Facebook right now. So we're capturing this right here, which is on notes. This will open and we'll transfer it into notes. But I have to go through Facebook, which I'm using this right here. Got a text message. 